there are no more second chances. You win today, and you get to play again tomorrow. It's the semifinals of the Ford Worlds in Hamilton. And into the semifinal as the round robin winner, the Canadian women's champion Marilyn Bodo and her team from St. Catharines. These daily meetings have turned out to be quite the bonus. Everything they have talked about has come true for them with only one loss. And now they go against a train from Norway that struggled to get in but is on a roll. Dordy Nordby won her tiebreaker this morning. Jeff Stoughton was perfect until his final round robin game. He had won eight in a row. He's had that draw weight in his pocket. But one mistake against Switzerland cost him the perfect record. And so now this team from the Charleswood in Winnipeg still has first place. And they will await the winner of a tiebreaker to see who they will play in their semifinal tonight. Jeff Stoughton feeling young again. Canada finished at eight and one in men's place. Scotland second, Switzerland third. And so we had four teams at four and five in the tiebreakers this morning. Eigel Ramsfeld, a winner over the US. Sweden steals it against England, beating Norway and Sweden will play this afternoon to see who plays Canada. While in women's play, Canada's first overall, leaving a tiebreaker between Norway and Scotland. And Norway opened with hammer, then stole two ends, scored four and three, setting up the women's semifinal. Marilyn Bodo against Dordy Nordby, it's world champions. The 1996 Ford World Curling Championships are brought to you by CIBC Trust, your will and estate planning and investment management professionals. Unitel, working with AT&T Canada. And by Labatt, good things brewing. You know, people used to make jokes about the water here in Hamilton Harbor and Burlington Bay, things like seeing fish glowing in the dark. But not anymore, because the fish you'll find in here now include salmon. In fact, the United Nations has recently recognized Hamilton and District for having some of the best environmental programs in the world today. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Hamilton and TSN's continuing coverage of this, the 1996 Ford World Curling Championships. It is semifinal day and coming up in the women's semifinal well Canada's Marilyn Bodo finished at eight and one first place but she had to play the waiting game waiting to see who she would play in her semi and now she knows it's Norway after Dordy Nordby the two-time world champion beat Scotland in a tiebreaker this morning and with their thoughts Lyndon Ray well Marilyn has been a long and a good week but it's playoff time a whole new ball game what do you expect from Norway today Actually, it's been a short week for us. This is far less games than we played in the Canadian and Ontario Championships, so we feel really good. We're really going to enjoy this game, go out there, play hard. You know, we're going to have our own game plan set that we've had all year round. That's not going to change. Um, you know, we're going to come out on top, you know, and hopefully uh, tomorrow will be a Super Saturday. It's been a little tough because it's been a new Doherty Nordby today. She didn't play as well during the week. Suddenly, she seems to be playing better. What about a scouting report on suddenly the new Norway? Well, as Lindsay said, just another paper bag. You know, we've played the uh, one game against Doherty in the round robin. We're anticipating, hey, we know she's a two-time champion. She's going to come out playing well, and she's going to have to. Well, you're right, uh, but so far, Ray, it seems that Norway is on a roll again. Well, Linda, she's a world champion, and this is the day she looks forward to. She loves to play Canada. She beat Scotland this morning, and she'll be very tough today. Dirty, just a, uh, a comment maybe about, first of all, about the game this morning. Uh, today we played really well and uh, won comfortable. It was uh, a really nice game. We had a lot of fun. And, and then there's, it's obvious by your comments in the paper that there's no love lost between you and Marilyn, so you must be looking forward to this game this afternoon. Yeah, well, really looking forward to it. But uh, what I meant it with the uh, paper, I meant it, uh, that every player on the team is uh, re really important. It's not only with Skip. Of course. Dirty, uh, it's tough for you to get competition during the year, but when you get to the World Championships, you get that little sparkle in your eye. Yeah, when it comes to the semifinal, and it's always fun. Well, good luck and thank you for joining me. Thank you. Victor? 
You know, Linda Ray, like so many cities, Hamilton has begun to reclaim its waterfront. And if you come back to Hamilton in the summer, you'll actually see people swimming now in the water of Hamilton Harbor. When we come back, it's the women's semifinal, Canada and Marilyn Bodo against the two-time world champion from Norway, Jordi Nordby. As we continue with our coverage of the 1996 Ford World Curling Championship right here on TSN. Welcome back to Cops Coliseum on this semifinal day, the 96 Ford Worlds. Three sheets in play of the five, two women's semifinals, and a men's tiebreaker. Our featured game, Canada Norway, is on sheet B. Let's read the ice now with Ray, and it's all brought to you by Labatt. I'll tell you how good this ice is. Even Vic could make a draw on this ice. From this hog line to this T line. 23 and a half to 24 seconds. Going around about four feet. Both turns. Getting around the corner, once again, four feet. It's a repetitious if you've been with us all week, but that's the way it is. It's been consistent, and that's what they love. Hitting from the outside. Keeping the weight up, it'll run fairly straight, about three or four inches. Coming off the center, about, oh, 14 to 16 inches, depending. The slide path will get a little slick may get to 24. There's been no frost problem that it's affected anything in the ice. You've got two terrific teams. There's a little conflict between them. This should be a terrific game, Victor. Yeah, I think everybody expects it to be. You've got uh, world champions both and a smattering of boos for uh, the introduction of Doherty Nordby. Our feature game is on the left. In the middle is the men's uh, tiebreaker between Sweden and uh, Norway, and then the other one, of course, is USA Germany women's game. That's on the outside, the extreme right, as we meet the two teams. And for the Canadians, of course, it's Jane Hooper Perot and Kristen Loveseth are the leads. Corey Beveridge, Marianne Asplin throws second stones. The third for Canada, Kim Gallard and Miriam Haslam. And the skip for Canada is Marilyn Bodo, and for Norway, the two time world champion. 31-year-old Dordy Nordby all set to do battle here. The women's semifinal at the Ford Worlds. Canada, by virtue of their first place finish, had choice of rock color, and they get the hammer, so they've taken yellow. They have last rock, and to get us underway here in this first end of play is the Norwegian lead, 22-year-old Kristen Loveseth. Well, then she, uh, Dordy all week long has kept a lot of rocks in play, and she's had a... You know, in my opinion, in many cases, she kind of uh, plays to, to make that big shot. I'll be interested to see if she just a little bit uh, plays a little straighter uh, in this game today. She's uh, she loves to play the off angle shots, the, the uh, raises, and in, in some cases earlier this week, and we commented on it, she really caused herself, and in my opinion, Water skips at just horrible ends. I mean, really uh, badly, and uh, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if she's just a little bit more uh, conservative uh, today. The one thing we both know, and you and I talked about it, is that Norway hey! loves to play Canada in the semifinals. You talked about it earlier this week. Well, they believe that this is when Canada is the most nervous. It's a different system than we're used to in Canada. Sudden death semifinals, the top team plays the fourth place team. Of course, they know the record means nothing now. Canadian women only one loss so far. Doherty Nordby coming in after round robin play with a record of five and four. And it's fascinating to see Norway in the women's and the men suddenly coming out. Playoff day and they're fired up, ready for any challenge that comes forth. I think you're right though, Ray. I think Doherty will keep it a little simpler to start kind of get the feel of things but we know the kinds of shots she can make the other thing too is we're just not matching up Marilyn Bodo and Dordy Norby we're matching up the teams and I think if you go through the teams and, and Kim Gillard and Corey Beveridge and Jane Hooper Perot in my opinion are as good a nucleus as you could have I mean we watched the Scott Turner Hearts where the curling was phenomenal and uh, these three young ladies really really put on a great performance so I'm not sure that uh, Doherty's team can play with them uh, in, in all aspects of uh, the, the heart of the order. Their composition, though, uh, Linda, is somewhat similar. Doherty, the veteran, has taken on two former Norwegian junior players, along with Marion Aspelin, and, and that's much the same way that uh, the Canadian champions are built. Mm -hmm. Good point, Victor. I think the jump, though, uh, from junior uh, 
uh, playing uh, in the European countries oh, and junior, our oh. junior level to uh, in the Scott Durham Hearts, for example, is, uh, is uh, you know, our juniors are a little stronger coming out. Well, I've been very impressed with Kim Gillard, for example, who brings forward a maturity beyond her years to the third position and provides input to the whole team, and in particular, Maryland at that position. So it is, I think, a great strength for Canada. Corey Beveridge has been the top second during the week as far as shooting percentages. That sets up the ends very well. And you mentioned Jane Hooper Perot is a lead that can put the stones in place as well. So it is a solid unit. Have to see how Norway comes out at every position today. Good shot, Corey. Good shot, Corey. Looking for a corner guard there, I think. She called for it in front, slips into the rings. So this morning, Norway and Scotland were on the ice. The two teams that finished five and four, and yeah. Norway won it easily. Look at that. Opened with two, and then the steals of Whoa. second and third ends as she rattled off a four in fifth, and three Hold more in seven, and won it easily over Kirsty Hay from Perth. 11-3, and so Doherty Nordby is now into this yeah. semifinal against Canada. Corey Beveridge, Canada does have the hammer, the last rock here in this first day. Yep. Hurry. What Dirty Hurry was uh, a little critical Hurry. about of Maryland. That's with a Gotta small go. smattering of booze that you mentioned, Vic. You know, she felt that she feels that uh, that Maryland, uh, you know, focuses too much around herself and doesn't give enough uh, focus to the team. And if and what we were saying earlier is that. Dirty is very much that way herself. She's very flamboyant. She plays to the crowd and the audience. So really, it's uh, uh, from uh, a fan participation point of view, uh, they're very similar. I think it's a uh, little head game that she's playing, maybe. I, don't know. I do. I know Doherty really well. I mentioned uh, earlier in the week as well when Doherty uh, got into the semifinals in 1990, she was quite vocal about how she thought it was great to be playing Canada. She likes to express herself at that point of the week, and I think it's trying to play a few head games. Uh, Marilyn has not seen the newspaper article. The coaches have tried to keep it away from the team, and it's funny because I think this year Marilyn is more focused on the team aspect with her coach Mary Gillard. They have right goal-setting exercises prior to the right game, there. and they call it their little team bubble, that they do stay within themselves and, and really support right. each other. So it's just yeah. kind of an interesting thing that Doherty brought up, and, and I do think it's a bit of psychology. Yeah. Marilyn's a veteran. It's not going to bother her one little bit. And she said it best of all. And uh... these were the comments that were in the uh, Hamilton Spectator, some of which we've uh, we've lifted. Marilyn has uh, the fun herself, and all the focus is on her, and not enough on the team. But I think Ray makes a good point that uh, they could be interchangeable if you just change the names. Hold it in. A couple of corner guards looking for a couple of corner guards there, and then didn't get them up. They slipped into the rings, but. No problem, just being exchanged in. And a half. It is funny over the years, though, all the years that I umpired and we broadcast how Norway somehow gets themselves well, into those semis. And well, it always seems to happen well, that they're playing against the Canadians. Huh? Have you ever noticed that? It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, 12. Okay, Cam. Okay. Okay, Cam, sorry. Sorry. Well, on the left is Mary Gillard. That's Kim Zum, and uh, she is the coach. And Pat Perot, of course. Pat, the husband of uh, Jane Hooper Perot. That's ex curler. Yep. <laughs> and then Lisa Savage, the fifth player of this championship team, sitting down. One advantage that uh, Norway may have them is they played this morning on the ice and played well. I always think that's a bit of a, a tiny, tiny bit of an edge because you just you had it rolling, you played well, and you're, it's the same surface. And no, I agree. And when you're a little bit nervous, which let's face it, Canada must be coming into this huge game. Uh, Doherty's got a little bit of that edge off already today, having been on the ice and having some confidence with the surface and the feel for draw weight. 
but and that's why I did expect a fairly open end from Canada, if nothing else, uh, that they wouldn't try anything too big. Well, they tried to get the corner up, actually. They, she they she called it anyway. Point, yeah. well, she was the best all week. There was absolutely no question of that. Marilyn Bodo and Canadian champions from the St. Catharines oh, Curling Club finishing with a record of eight and one. One game better than the United States. Lisa Schenneberg from Madison. Place, that's good. Who's on the ice now in her semifinal against Andrea Schopp from Germany. We'll keep you updated on what happens there as well. Tell Corey to sweep. Pardon? Forgot it was behind the sea line. Yeah. Hung, yeah hung the international in. sweeping oh. rule from Victor Greeley off the internet. We'd love to hear from you. There's our address. Can players change positions during a game? No, they cannot. Simple answer. Of course, if somebody takes ill during a game, uh, they can leave the game and a substitute can come in. That would be the only change that could be made. And has to go into that position. Is that correct? I believe so. Yep. 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 Doherty Nordby. Yep. Oh. So the opportunity, the chance now for Canada to blank this first end of play. Roll. Yep. Lock first. Yep. Make it go away, isn't that what we mm -hmm. say about this? Better a bit from this one, just so it's fine, so it's plopped a bit. Here we go. Oh, positive 12 here. Rock first. Roll. How did you read uh, Marilyn this morning when you were talking to her? Well, she seemed a little nervous. That's not really wrong. You have to have an activation level about you. You can't be too relaxed. Yep. And this should settle them down. A fairly open end, a chance to blank. Hey! Corey Beveridge Three. closest to the stone. Okay, Jane hooper Perro. Get the roll. Okay. No, she'll sit right there. Edge of the floor. Oh, so Canada with last rock will open taking one. It's the women's semifinals here at the 96 Ford Worlds, and Norway will have hammers. Hi, welcome to uh, TSN Control's production mobile for curling. Right in front of me is the production switcher. When, uh, during the show, the director will tell me what to select and put up on the monitors here. I can, uh, you know, change the cameras, change shots, um, all sorts, all kinds of stuff like that. My brain teaser today would be, hi, that's me, Vic, Ray, and Linda. How many TSN technicians at the site here does it take to put on the show that you see at home? Okay. That's really great, Chris. But uh, the information we're all really dying to know is. How many times have both the Canadian men and women won the world championship in the same year? Chris Carey, thank you very much. Just part of a very uh, talented crew. How many times have both the Canadian men and women won the double? All right, we'll think about that as you will as we go to the second end. Canada with the uh, last rock on the first, forced to take one, and with the first Canadian stone, Jane Hooper Perot slips it to the back 12. Norway to have the hammer. Yep. Hot. Come in. Keeping it Come simple, in. the stone, the Canadian rock is back 12 foot. Doherty could ignore it. She could tap it. She could Come freeze in. to it, but she's trying to hit it. This is quite different from the style we saw a week, Linda. 
It is. First game During the week, she loved rocks in play. She loved the circus shots coming off side ones, making raises. House is wide open. And you believe what? It's just the fact that you're getting, you know, feeling themselves out a little bit here? I think it's partly that. I definitely think for Canada, they don't want to take too many chances. They want to be patient. They know that they can make the shots, but they don't want to take risks. For Doherty, I think it's a little bit of changing Back game forward. plan because she did get herself into trouble. There was some ends where it was just much too complicated for her team to execute. That, of course, is the women's semifinal. Lisa Schoenberg against Andrea Schopp and the tiebreaker to see who will play Canada. Miguel Hasselborg from Sweden. Eigel Ramsfeld, three-time okay. world champion yeah. from yeah. Norway. They yeah. won their first yeah. set of tiebreakers this morning. Yeah. One now Come in. to play Canada tonight. Yeah. Well, by the same token, this isn't something we haven't seen before when it is in fact do or die and there is no second chance the the play seems to get more conservative well you saw the scores from the other sheets two blank ends we could have had a blank in the first end here except Marilyn uh, did nose hit the one so definitely a bit of nerves a bit of cautiousness you don't want to take any huge chances and get into trouble but by the same token you don't want to go too far the other way because Ray has talked about it many times if it's too open in the beginning and suddenly about halfway through you give up a big end when the opponent has last rock if you make a mistake you don't have a lot of time to regroup. Two men's tiebreakers went this morning, and it was a Norway Eigel Ramsfell winning easily over the U.S. and Tim Somerville. And look at that, Miguel Hasselborg got one in nine to tie, and then stole it in ten against Alistair Burns from Wigan, 5-4. And actually, the English team overswept and attempted hit and roll off their own stone to get to the button, or they might have had it. They just missed it by a couple of inches. Very exciting game. But again, looking at the Norway scores, both the men's and the women's, what's fascinating is the X's. The fact that the Norwegian men came out firing, finished in six ends. The women finished in seven ends in those tiebreakers. Yeah, no, a much different oh, approach today. Yeah, it's amazing. They just have a way about them when they get near those semifinals. And when you come to think of it, Igo Ramsfeld is very fortunate to be even in the playoff because he got beat up badly yesterday in his game, which he had to win. And then all of a sudden, uh, Alistair Burns from Wigan beat um, uh, the United States to uh, throw the whole thing into a schmazzle. Four teams tied. But uh, if Tim Somerville could have won that game, he would have been alone yeah. in the semifinals. Boy. And you wonder what kind of letdown he was uh, suffering after failing to do it in the ninth round. Well, we saw up in Thunder Bay, of course, uh, Marilyn Bodo's father, Frank, on the phone all the time. And uh, there he is again. And we've made contact. Hello, Mr. Bodo. How are you? I'm very well, Frank. How are you? I'm very well. Now, listen, you can stay on the line with us. And will you tell you where the stones were? Our, our art. Now, tell us, is it true it cost you $1,500? The phone bill, the cellular bill from uh, Thunder Bay, was that it? No, it wasn't that much. No, but it was pretty close? Very close. <laughs> <laughs> now, who are you phoning back home? Oh, I wasn't. I just got a call from Florida. My phone rang a few moments ago, and my salesman called me from Florida. Oh, okay. All right. Well, stay with us now. It's pretty... What do you think of your daughter's play so far this week? Well, I'm just concerned about this game. Who's going to make the first mistake? Or oh, her play this week has been absolutely marvelous. In both games, except when... Uh, she came off the ice there when one game she almost lost. She says, Dad, I was struggling. You know, I said, so was I. What's yeah. the, what's the, can you tell me what the price of spruce is this morning? Oh. I need some two by fours and, uh, what grade do you want? Yeah, uh, <laughs> grade three. Grade three? Yeah. That's the same as my education. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's only around $280 right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're trying to make up for that phone bill. U.S. or Canadian? Uh, the, <laughs> Listen, we appreciate you taking time. Enjoy You're the game, and uh, we w and uh, listen. Call us anytime if you can't see the stones. We'll tell you where they are. All right. I appreciate that. Okay, Frank oh. Bodo. God bless you. Thank you. Oh. And uh, Bodo Lumber, of course, oh. here in St. Catharines and on oh. the West Coast in Vancouver. 
throw a phone in for that. And it is very tough to watch. Very tough for the families to be in the stands. Well, then you'll be happy to know I had a big talk with Kerry Burton this morning, and I'm definitely sending my boys out to learn that tuck delivery. The tuckers are just a singing now, boy. I tell you, Vic Peters and Kerry and Jeff Stoughton and David Smith. Maryland's first stone of this end, and that stone belonging to Norway is just too tight to the ring, so they're going to try and hit and roll in. The numbers they're referring to, they time all their shots from the first hog line to the far tee line. So their takeout numbers usually are between 12 seconds and 14 seconds. 12 seconds, of course, the faster takeout. 12 and a half. Clean, 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 low. Yep. No. Yeah. No, isn't it? Okay. Close so this well, two-on-one scenario now. Mm -hmm. right? Chance to get behind the corner. From Robin uh, Mira, can you put too much pebble on the ice, and how does this affect the curl and speed? Well, you can. You could. You could certainly over pebble it and get it. Uh, you know, get it. Uh, too thick and too heavy, and then the pebbles too close together, and it could it would certainly affect the, the running course of the uh, of the stone for sure. Um, the first skip stone for Norway here in the second of this women's semifinal. Canada leading one nothing, and this lady, Dordy Nordby from Oslo, does have hammer. Dorty did take lots of ice, and this one's not going to bend for them. If you pebbled it too much, you know, uh, Vic, it would be almost like another flood. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're not getting the 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 raised bump effect. You know, if you just and so it would be the rock uh, wouldn't be curling. Uh, there would just be yeah. too much yeah. friction, yeah. and it would never slide. So what are we talking about there? Approximately two feet of movement with that ice. It didn't break like we thought it might. I asked uh, the ice people, uh, and I watched a little bit in the practice, and it seemed to be moving okay. Twelve and a half. Get the roll. I know it's going to curl. We know it's going to curl. It should, she said. Well, Marilyn is starting from the center line and moving out. No. Yep. That should no. give her more movement. Whoa. No! Whoa. A little further than twelve and a half. Okay, Chuck. Final stone for the Norwegian skip Dordi Nordby, who in semifinal play has four wins and one loss, and only once before has played Canada, and that was against Alison Goring in 1990, and Dordi Nordby was a winner. And she'll hit and roll to the edge of the eight for the single point. So a very cautious beginning to this women's semifinal. Norway picks up one in the second, and we're even. 1-1 one, one going to the third, and Canada and Maryland Boda will have hammer back. Now we go to the final stone in the women's semifinal between the United States and Germany. The USA with hammer blank the first end against Andrea Schupp from Garmisch. And this appears as if it may be a hit for two. There's a yellow stone at the back, but tough to tell. 
get that one first though. Drive it by. She jams it on the back and the U.S. will settle for one sitting at the top of the floor. So Lisa Schenenberg from Madison who finished second in the standings opens the scoring against Germany and Schopp will have the hammer. Updating the men's tiebreaker to see who will play Canada tonight. Sweden against Norway. They blank the first. Sweden with the hammer here. This is Mikael Hasselborg against Igel Ramsfeld. Both ended their round robin play at four and five, and it'll curl too much. And light. Steal of two for Ramsfeld and Norway as they go to the third. Sweden to have last rock. That particular stone you just were talking about, uh, Vic, there is no excuse really for that to be missed because for some unknown reason yep. they took just about four inches over the center yes, ice line. to play down to that stone. Hard I mean, Hasselberg had line. the right draw weight, but he Real. ran out of ice, out of rings. I mean, if you throw that rock down the center, it's right on the on the button. I, I don't. I never understand that when curlers cut themselves off like that. Well, especially Sorry, in that situation, cut. he was actually drawing to a stone in front of the T line. And even if he came up with perfect weight and touched the front of it, he wouldn't have shot either. Well, if you hit it on the corner, I guess that's his theory. If you yeah. just touch it and it rolls over, you're going to be shot. But I mean, you've seen so many times. Like, let's go back to to Jeff Stoughton's draw to the button against Norway in his game that night. He played the intern draw with his first one, put it on the T line. And then when I go froze to it, he just went, put the room down on the other side of the rings and drew with the out turn away from the two stones. And that's Come what this game's about. I mean, he, he, Hasselberg threw the right way. He really did. He just ran out of rings. It makes no sense to me. Come on. 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 I guess what I'm trying to say is that you cannot look for that little so called extra help. Here's a good come around. By Kristen Loveset, the Norwegian lead, the 22 year old student at university student. She's studying at tourism and a marketing. In fact, she and Miriam Haslam, the third, are in the very same class together. They grew up together. You like hack? In yeah. Lillehammer. Okay. It's tough to follow uh, this Norwegian team down. Uh, most of the players throw very little rotation. You saw that one was almost straightening at the end, and they tend to throw a little outside of target line to in. They get more action on their stones. So Team Canada really has to watch that they broom themselves from their own rocks. Yes! Right out of her hand. You can hear the yells of Marilyn Poto. Trying to hold it now. Get it by. They do. And up the back. Nice shot. They wanted to roll away from that spot. You heard uh, Jane Hooper Perot yeah. say they were playing. We were playing the long roll. I was a little tight on the broom. Looking for the double. Ah, Jams it. Very Aspelin. Let's jam. Don't want to jam it. I think we have to hit it like on the nose almost. It'll jam, eh? Yeah. Okay. Twelve and a half. Thirteen. Yep. Look at this go. Get it by. They do. Oh. Interesting when the sorry, Linda. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say it worked out pretty well because they can't. Uh, Norway can't get the hit behind the guard. So even though they didn't roll the way they wanted, they also didn't set up a good shot for Norway. Very oh. Aspel. Gonna catch anything? Hard. 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 
The men's semifinal goes tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific. We know Jeff Stoughton will be there, carries a record of 8-1. Yeah. and one. Who yeah, will he play? Yeah. The winner of this tiebreaker going on right now, Sweden and Norway, as they play the third. Norway leading 2-0 after the steal of the deuce in the second. Corey Beveridge. Ice skates. Yep. Eats it. Got room. Yep. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's sleep it, guys. They dragged that a long way. I was timing it with my stopwatch, and it didn't have a lot of speed at the hog line, but they dragged mm -hmm. it right into the house. This we can give that carry day. Yeah. It uh, can carry the stone Jack six to Jack ten Jack feet, and I'm pretty sure they dragged this one about that ten foot mark because it seemed like it was really slowing. Well, all three of them were on it as it uh, got to the hog line. Norwegian yeah, third yeah, is 22 yeah, year old Mario yeah, Haslam. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Down. Very nice shot. Yep. 12 and a half. Hitting this one here, driving it there, and trying to roll behind the guard. Kim Gillard. Yep. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. Good girl. And they just missed that back one yeah. several times. Yeah. Doherty lining up the two stones. Same scenario. Canada with last rock here in the third of this 1-1 tie. In turn come around, Round top of the eight time. foot. Back eight. Lots of room. Maybe more. Right off. Lots of room. Right off. It's on the line. Okay, Kim. Sorry, guys. Taking it back. Yeah. Sorry, Marilyn. Um, I'm not getting a really good. He hangs yeah. on that line. Even with uh, that. Staying even so with straight, eh? Hey? Yeah. Great. Kim Gillard and Miriam Haslam tied in terms of thirds percentage. Interesting, the top four are on the ice today in the two women's semifinals Erica Brown and Monica Wagner in their semifinal, USA against Germany. Actually, in the last two games in round robin play, Kim curled 90%. Her numbers were quite a bit lower for a while, and she was bringing it up in the last two games. She played very well. And those numbers are big for Doherty because she came into the game after round robin play at 65% overall. So she did play much better in the tiebreaker. Want to roll over in front of that stone. You think that look good at that? So go for a nose. Four. You can afford a little bit of a roll. Yeah, yeah, okay.
right round robin, Mayumi Okatsu from Japan, who finished with their best record ever in World bit Championship bit play, was ranked number one. Japanese finished at four and five. Couple of options you could if you wanted to take the end right away, come down yep. in front of it, of course. Looks like she's going to try and play to catch just a corner of it and come over to this side here. Very tight shot. You can only see about a quarter of it. Certainly can't afford to wreck on the uh, guard, otherwise you're giving up three. In her eighth world championship appearance, she won in 90, 91, and now trying yeah. to qualify for the final here in 96. Thin and come across. Nice shot. Nice shot. <laughs> Dorothy's quite good at angles. She knows how to line them up. Well called. Good sweeping to hold the line, and both the yellow ones go. Little exhale. Well, and yep, here yep. she goes with the final stone Five. for Canada here in this third, looking Three. to blank at a 1 1 tie. Five. All the way up. Hey. Okay. And she'll okay. sit there again. So Five. they've both had opportunities now to blank, and Canada has failed twice. It's a 2 1 lead. Norway to have hammered coming back. Welcome back to our coverage here in Hamilton, the 96 Ford Worlds. This is the men's tiebreaker. As they play in the third, 2 0 for Eichel Ransfeld in Norway as Mikael Hasselberg tried the center line raise, clipped his own, and it'll be another steal of one for Norway and Ramsfeld. As he leads 3 0 here in this men's tiebreaker, the second of the day, the winner to play Canada in the men's semi tonight. So, Igel Ramsfell getting warmed up. As we take a look at the game now on the far side of Cops, on the right side of your screen, that's Sheet D in the other women's semi final. That's the USA and Germany, Lisa Schoenenberg. Scored one in the second with last rock. Germany getting ready to throw their final stone. And you can see the Americans have two covered. And the last rock, the hammer, belongs to the former world champion Andrea Schopp from Garmisch as she talks to her third, Monica Wagner. Well, they have to decide if they want to try and run their red one on the far side back or the yellow one, center line back. I think if she runs the yellow one straight back with good solid weight, uh, Lyndon catches it just off the nose, then she can kill the two yellow stones in the rings, and the raised stone will be outside the forefoot, and that way the back red stone will count. But the key here is that at this point, the USA is only lying one. Yep. Thank you for the overhead. And there's what she's looking at.
Raising this straight back. Andrea Schopp, who won her world title in 1988. Doesn't curl enough, and it'll be a steal of one. One yellow. And so the USA, who finished second in round robin play with a record of seven and two, Lisa Schenenberg, who lost the 92 final to Sweden and Elizabeth Gustafsson, looking to put herself into the final here in Hamilton. And coming up tonight, Will it be Norway or will it be Sweden that plays Jeff Stoughton in Canada in the men's final? We'll have it for you, the men's semifinal. 8 p.m. Eastern time. To the fourth we go, Canada leading 2-1 over Norway <laughs> and the Norwegians. Dordy Nordby to have last rock. And that stone was called short of the rings for a corner. It's going to slide in. 12 and a half. Looks like another fairly open end. Corey Beveridge. 13, baby. How much? 13. 12 and a half. Lean. Lean. 12 and a half. Good shot, Corey. Good shot. Nice weight. It's been the most wide open three ends. Four and weight. You hear the team talking about the style of play. Marianne Aspelin. From Andrew Stewart. What are the dimensions uh, of the uh, sheet of ice? A little different, though, European or uh, we say at the world level as compared to Canada. Well, the main difference, of course, being the width of the sheet of ice in uh, Canadian play, it's 14 feet 2 inches. And in World Fe Curling Federation play, it's 15 feet 7 inches. And we've noted that's made that tick, that center line rock that you try to move off, more difficult for to get all the way to the side, which is actually when the penalty is incurred. So that's the major difference, that it's a lot wider here. You mean the Gouldy? The Gouldy. Mm -hmm. The total length of the sheet's about 146 feet, and it's the same whether you're at World Curling Federation events or Canadian events. Interesting. Marion Aspelin, when they were putting this team together, yeah. she actually played third for a short period of time early in the season. Woo! Didn't like it. Doesn't like third at all. And said, my second is my position. And so... It's been a period of adjustment for this Norwegian team because the familiar Hannah Pettersson, who is uh, now married, and Hannah Woods, and is here as their fifth player. And she had played with Dordy Nordby for some 15 years. And we'd always seen those two together as they uh, third and skip combination. So it took a while for Dordy and Miriam Haslam to get used to each other at third and skip. Now, if you're going to play in the third position, you have to have all the shots. It's a very, very key position. There's lots of hey, quiet shots. Hey, and if you look at Marianne Aspel in the second for Norway, over the course of the week, her takeouts have been the stronger shot. So you would think that would be the better position for her. And Marianne Haslam has actually been a little stronger on her draws and the quiet shots. So it makes sense as far as st statistics go. And the lady sitting over the clock in the green sweater and watching is Hannah Pettersson, now Hannah Woods. The fifth player for this Norwegian team. And actually, she does provide a lot to the team still. She comes out in the fifth end break. And remember, earlier in the week, uh, Dordy Norby said the key in one of their games was Hannah came out and said, try drawing around from the wide side in, not the inside out around those guards. It worked very well for them. Okay. From Russell Cold in Burlington. How can the ice be faster when the time from hog to tee line is uh, greater? That is the very, very confusing question that uh, I'll probably confuse more yeah. by giving an answer Hi. to. Fast ice does not relate to a stopwatch time. It relates to the lack of friction on the stone and the fact the stone glides more easily. When a stone glides more easily, it actually takes longer to get okay, down the ice. The player doesn't have to give it as much momentum to make a draw shot, for example, than when there's lots of frost on the ice and the stone is grabbed very quickly. 
So it's not a stopwatch time that uh, gives it the term fast ice. It's the ease of the stone gliding down the ice. That's a great explanation. Just imagine if I had done it. <laughs> <laughs> Wide open end, trying to get a little roll. Well, here we go, reaching out okay. and uh, touching someone again. And this time we uh, go to Mr. Gallard, Kim's dad. Sam, are you there on the phone I'm with us? Hi, Vic. Hi, Ray. Hi, Linda. <laughs> oh, good. Hi. How you doing up there? Oh, we're doing fine. Where about to you? Just uh, of you. It doesn't get any easier watching this. You know, I've been watching this stuff for a long, long time now. I think every game gets tougher. Well, I tell you what, we have all been thoroughly impressed with uh, Kim since we first saw her uh, at the uh, Scott in Thunder Bay. You must be very proud. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, she's come a long way since the world in Bulgaria and up in Thunder Bay. Now she's playing with the big girls and now here. But like I say, you know, every game gets tougher. I think it's harder on us being the fairest than it is the players who got on the end. There Stay with us for a second, if you don't mind, as we watch uh, Marilyn Bodo deliver her first here in this uh, fourth end of play. Canada leading two to one, and Norway has last run. Go, Corey, go! Let her roll, let her roll. Okay, good shot. It's good. Nice Again, it's uh, the That's fact good. that we're very impressed with Kim's way she reacts with Marilyn. She's very good with Marilyn, very supportive. Uh, has that surprised you at all, coming together so quickly like this? Well, not really. You know, Kim's been around the game for a long time, and so is Marilyn, so is the whole team. And I think it's important for the players to kind of interact, uh, discuss shots, uh, because, you know, Kim was a skip in the junior world, which is not quite the same caliber as this, but I think she knows what she's doing. Yeah, she has a great feel for the game uh, for yeah. someone her age, that's for sure. And obviously she's had great training. And then when you play in the international events and in the national events, she had to win the Canadian Junior Championship to get to the to the Worlds. That uh, It's just every game well, out there is uh, you're gaining some experience. Yeah, that, you know, that's true, Ray. The pressure is the same no matter what level you're at. Just the caliber may be a little bit different. I know? think the big thing that really helps a lot of the young girls in our country, too, is the ability to be able to listen to the top the skips line. in the world. We do do so much television, and they get a chance to listen to Russ Howard and, and Wernick and, and uh, you know, the Burtniks of the game, and, and that is an educational tool. I think our young people have a, a real advantage over some other countries. Well, that's true. She's had some pretty good people around her. Paul Savage, you know, her uncles, uh, you've been around for a long time, and, you know, when my wife Mary, the coach, uh, you know, seems to know what Corey, she's doing. She doesn't ask me for too much advice. Being an old hockey player, like, uh, you know, yeah. but... <laughs> So listen, tell me, with 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 mom with mom coaching and daughter playing, what's dinner table talk about? Actually, we're having a lot of pizzas while they're away. No. <laughs> a lot of pizzas, a lot of steaks, and a barbecue. So that's about it. How's the hockey series going? Oh, very well. My son Mike um, is in a big series this week against Markham. He yeah. plays for the Thornhill Islanders in the Metro Junior A League. He's playing tonight, so I'm going to watch this and shoot back for his game. He played Monday night, and uh, I missed the curling to see that, and I was. Here on Wednesday, and he lost his game, and he's playing tomorrow night as well. So I have a pretty busy week going back and forth. She's in soccer season starts for Kim in a little while too, huh? Kurt? That's true. You're going to be true. busy. Sam, thanks wow. very much, and we wish uh, you and the family, and of course Team Canada, all the very best. Just before he goes, Sam, have you got anything to sell? Is there anything you wanted to sell, or? Well, actually, this week has been my office for the whole week. I worked for Tormont <laughs> Caterpillar, and as a matter of fact, I made a few deals up in the stands. <laughs> but thanks for asking. Okay, all right, Sam. All the best. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Final stone for Canada Lots of here in this fourth. Yep, yep. Hurry. Yep. Trying to bring it back to get more movement. Ray, it seems that they're just not getting the swing that we might have seen in practice even. No, I, I'm really surprised. I watched the practice and they were, you know, they were really going as they were this morning to the wings, but they just seem to be not finishing as well. Norway and Dordy Nordby looking for the blank. 
She had a chance herself in the second, couldn't do it. Come in. Come in. Whoa. Whoa. Try and roll away. Get it out of there. Enough? No, Go it'll away. sit in the back eight for one. So these two teams <laughs> trade singles through four. We're all even, and Canada will have hammer. To paraphrase, can't anybody blank in this game? Both teams have had two chances, and so as we go to the fifth, we're tied 2-2, and Canada will have the hammer playing five. Well, I talk about the Canadian women and how strong they've been. Uh, during the week, Jane was a little bit stronger on her takeouts. That was a bit of a concern because you need those first stones in good position, but she's playing well now. Corey, the top second, been great all week. Kim, I mentioned it just in the last day, and great input on strategy, good line calls, good brushing calls. Marilyn has, in the last couple of games, played up to her own level, ignored the opponent, ignored what they do, their strategy line and game. their methods. And she's played Lines the way room. she should, especially Lines against room. Japan in round robin Lines play. Room. Okay, come on, bring it close. Come on. Jeez, I wish I would have had you as a come teacher. On. I would have had all A's. Okay, no, Vic. <laughs> 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 Absolutely not. But you were Maybe in at. geography and <laughs> history, okay, but not in curling. No. Yeah, we right. just do like you. You actually throw it very nicely. Once we got through that trunk lift stage, you were, <laughs> you were right. fine. And a hard worker on the ice, too. Oh, very. I would not effective, mind you, but very hard, hard worker. worker. That's right. He might not have got the great letter grade, but he would have got the great comment. comment. That's right, yeah. Vic is good in school. He's a hard worker, oh, just <laughs> not effective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Looking for the roll. Come on. Nice shot. Nice. Kristen loves Seth, the Norwegian good lead. Way, Jane. That's a quarter of a stone behind as we keep our eye as well on the game between Sweden and Norway. This is the men's tiebreaker, remember? The winner to go on to play Canada and Norway with a steal of two in the second and another steal of one in the third as they get ready now and have a look at the situation here in the fourth. Mikael Hasselborg with Hammer. And you can see Norway has shot stone, at least that's what it appears to be, and that's why Sweden is taking so much trying to fight figure out how they can get rid of that shot rock and try and score the other two yellows Frozen. in the house. What a great roll because the Sweden really had Eigel in trouble. Okay, Jane. Top right, Canada's okay, Jane. going to slide too far. Jane Hooper bounces off the uh, Norwegian stone. Could you play a double at this, a, a, a wide double at this and hopefully split them off around that, those, uh, that yellow stone in the 12 foot? If you actually nose the front red onto the, the one next you mean, red, yeah. you might get two just by nosing yeah. it one onto the other, but it would be dangerous. I think you'd drive this, uh, well, I guess if you hit it thin enough, what you're saying is to come across the face like that, eh? Yeah, I guess. Try and squirt that by, there. Yeah. I, I don't know, Victor. Nice idea, but... Uh, Good effort. Just, yeah, <laughs> well, just, as, just as we said, you know. <laughs> we don't want you to start thinking, Ooh. just throw. <laughs> Right, uh, yeah. there's Norway going the wide side. I mentioned Hannah Woods mentioned to Doherty to do that rather than coming from the center line side. Still a partial bit of the stone exposed. And now, with nothing to play, Mikael Hasselberg appears just to be drawing for his single. But it, I don't really understand uh, why he's drawing the way he is. I think he might be trying to touch the corner of the red one. All right. And, and do you think he can get two that way? That's what he's trying, so he thinks okay. he can get two. Obviously. Peter Erickson holding the brush. Now will the shooter sit? No, he jammed it, and he will give up another steal. I, I didn't see any possible way how he was going to get two out of that. I didn't either. Manya, I, I mean, it's easy. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. It's easy to say it now, but I mean, I was when you started talking about it, Linda, I, I was trying to think, what, what, what is he doing here, you know? Mm -hmm. you, there comes a time in a game where you have to take uh, the middle of the eight foot on the other side and draw for one and be three, t you know, be do two down. One. 
You can't make shots up if they're not there. You can't, you, you can't make them if they're not there. Did I guard for the gula? Norway trying to protect the center line area so that Canada can't promote their stone top eight foot back onto Shot Rock. Fart! Very Aspelin. Hey, Annepo. Canada will have the hammer, the last rock here in five of a 2 2 tie. And lots of weight. It's a big mistake. What? Do you like hitting the front one on the nose? So the Norwegian stone is still shot at the back. You think so? I think we can play hack to this one. Yes, I do think so. Who shot over here? Take a look there. You don't think so, Nick? No, we... There's only this. Yeah. It's either it's yes or no. This. Yeah, you got it all, eh, Just. Yeah. Just see it like again. It's hard, almost hard to miss it because if you hit it on the outside, Fine. onto the, the red, onto yellow. And hack. it'll come off hack. the other red one and go back like to the hack. back red one. Hack wait. And if it wasn't if it wasn't the Norwegian stone shot, they wouldn't play this. Well, they they still might actually because it's getting too messy in that center line area. This onto this, it'll come off the back of this like one. That? It should come back here. A little less, do you think? I would, yeah, because I That's was a little. That's twelve and a half. Hack. What? Yeah, that's good. Talking about the amount of ice now. Want more? No, we're thinking less. You want more? No, we're thinking less. Yep. Not very big weight. Corey Beveridge. You hear Kim yell out. Weight may be down. On the, front on the guard, one. you're hard. On the guard. Whoa. Yep, yep, yep. Roll it, Jane. Roll it. Hard, 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 hard. She's down okay. with her weight. Oh, yeah. Because remember, I feel more like 13 at that hack shot I had. Marilyn Bodeau's father is an interesting yeah. comment. Yeah, he says he was just sitting there nervous, uh, waiting for who would make the first mistake. And that's so true sometimes, Linda, in a curling game here. In a game like this where it's 1 1 1 1, who's going to make. Uh, the first move, and then who's going to make the first mistake? Damn your love. Prove them. I'm a four new time. You hit that red onto yellow, it'll drive it back onto the back red one. And then shuffle them. Not try it for them. Not come in and then rake it off. If you hit this stone here, anywhere onto this one here, it'll come off of this one and go back onto that one. I get the feeling, though, Linda, she thinks she can catch this in such a way to squeeze it out the side. That's what she's looking at. Coming, she's going to hit it on the on the high side and try and hit the yellow one thin. Mm -hmm. I don't like this shot. Marianne Aslam. She's going to have it thin enough, maybe. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Well, she's hitting it thick. She picked it out of there. Oh, look at that. Great shot. I really thought I had to hit the back of the, other, of the front red one. Well, she threw it well. It took a little okay. bit of time to come in. Didn't catch the early movement the Canadian stone is had, and that caught it on the outside. Which way and do we have to come? Got it right through the hole. Right through the hole. Good nice shot. shot. Doesn't matter what handle, they're both. We'll let Jan back here. Cross the face. Yeah. Don't you like 
like that. Yeah. Just off the nose. Bring the 12. double. Catch the double. Do you think we will, though? If it crosses the face? Because the top one's going to go to the right. But wait. 12. You can definitely make the double by coming across the face, I think. Yep. Kim Gillard. Come on, that wasn't very correct last one. Hurry <laughs> I'd like to see her punch that through the hole a few more times, though. Hard! Hard, hard! Get them both. Great job. Look at the roll. I didn't see that. That was there all the way. Across the face. There's going across the face now. You catch the back one and you get the roll. Sensational shot. Norway, Norway trying to raise their stone now onto Shot Rock. Whoa, she almost yes. fell down. Little wobble from Marianne Haslam as she throws her second. We're playing in the fifth of a 2 2 tie. Canada has last rock. Can you avoid the jam? They left it too long. Yeah, they had to be on that earlier. What? Oh, shot rock. That way? Around ours? What do you like? Looking down here. Either that or that way. Okay. Yeah, we've been playing yeah, we this know way. it. So top eight. And the decision was made because they know that spot better. The red one's actually a little harder to come around being in the rings, but they feel they know the ice. They've seen a lot of shots come down with the intern. Yeah. I personally like the other side better. Uh, and you're right, they're choosing it because of the ice, but the red one then can be used against you by driving it straight back. The other one is your own stone. Too deep. See what happened? What happened beside me? Did you see that? No. Something happened. That was a big Look at this. The handle yeah, yeah. broke yeah. off one of the stones on the, in the game between a Norwegian stone and the game between Sweden and Norway. And so now they've. Uh, I'll have to get another handle yeah. out. I, it's hard to see if the uh, stone was damaged at all, if the bolt hole or anything was damaged, but they can replace the handle fairly easily if nothing else is damaged. That's very unusual. You don't see that very often. I have seen it before. There's a little running surface. You can see where the little frost is gathered on that little quarter of an inch uh, running surface. And uh, you can curl on both sides of the stone, but uh, they're just going to replace that handle. As quick as changing a tire. There's the bolt, yeah. And in the pit right now, as you can relate to Victor. And, <laughs> and, and now get that walk. thing, get that back in play. Now let's on, move it. On, come on, come All right, on. good. That's right. Under the yellow. Let's under go. The yellow. Here we go. That is our quick Hey, pit now that's, a, that's a pit crew, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Norby. Looking for the double. Oh. 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 It's close. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Just going to play the role, I guess, Linda. Just rolling in front of it. Again, not swept. What kind of a sweeping call was that? <laughs> I have no idea why they weren't sweeping that. careful not to leave her a double like yeah to play it like up here that's the safer one Linda to go around what about this one again and she could just you can play that straight back on that one you like this yeah I like that one Linda if it's any of any importance to you I like that now eh? who did this turn I did here we well, heard Marilyn say, if I go around this one, then she can, that's the one they tried last time. She, you know, if you don't, she puts it behind, then you, they can always play it back onto it. So if you get up behind this one, you can lie too. In this area here. One of the T line. In good shape. I have no idea why they weren't brushing that stone. No, I don't know what they were, Norway was doing with their last one. 
You like this ice? I thought at first they were playing just to catch it on the outside and maybe catch the double. And then when they let it go, I mean, you think, well, it's a nose hit. Okay. And then it curved too much. I mean, that, that's a big mistake. Get one buried here. Very big mistake. She threw it well, and she deserved a better fate on that. Why they weren't calling it? It could be the inexperience at the head, maybe, eh? First skip stone for Canada. Marilyn Bodo here in five. Where is it? Back. Mine's good. Back. Yes. 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 Yep. A little bit. Line only. Whoa. Whoa. Lots of room. Where is it? I think higher is better. Room. Lots of room. Well, it's really wide open. You heard Kim say just not going to the wings at all. It's a surprise to them because it was earlier. Unfortunately, it's that deep as well because if a corner was open and it was higher in the house, there'd be a problem of maybe jamming it onto the redstone on the left, but it's just too deep, too open. What Linda is saying for our viewers here is if it was up here like this and, and open still, there's a, there's a danger in removing it that you could drive it back onto that stone there. But because it's back where it is, then she can now hit it and roll right over in front of this stone here. Well, through four, Doherty Nordby with the edge in percentage on Marilyn Bodo. 2-2 two -two on the scoreboard here as we play five. Well, they made a mistake last, excuse me, Vic, they made a mistake last with their, her last stone, and so there's a chance to get out of it here. This is not... Going for the double now, the thin double. They caught in between both times. Now that call is understandable. Yeah. They saw it hanging out. They tried to go for the plan B shot, the double, but they left it a little too long to catch it. It was a very thin one to try. We have lots of room. Yeah. But it was, it was even gone after. Sorry. Like, so we, were, we were just outside the gone. deep before. Are we ready? Yep. Right oh, well. there. So I think middle of the four foot's good ice. So it's a draw for two for Canada here in five. Great shot by Kim Glar to get that uh, double and remove those two stones in the roll behind. Crowds have been increasing the entire week and are expected to be the biggest today. And of course, on women's final Saturday, men's final Sunday here at Cops. Okay, guys. They've traded right, nothing but singles through four, and now Canada has a chance to score the game's first deuce here in five. Okay, guys, that's the curve. Marilyn Bodo puts it on the tee line, edge of the puck. Nice, nice shot, Kim. Sam Gillard leading the cheers of the Canadian families. Here it comes. They'll go to the fifth end break. Canada with a 4-2 lead over Norway. Nordby to have hammer when they resume play after a five-minute break. Now, fourth end update for United States against Germany. This is the other women's semifinal. USA leading 2-0. Final stone, Andrea Schopp from Garmisch. USA scored one in the first, stole one in uh, the third, and they'll steal two more here as Andrea Schock crashes in front, so Lisa Schoenberg from Madison, Wisconsin has the lead as they go to five here in the women's semifinals of the 96 Ford World Curling Championships. The 1996 Ford World Curling Championships are brought to you by Maple Leaf Meats, a cut above. CIBC Trust, your will and estate planning and investment management professionals. 
and by Unitel, working with AT&T Canada. We all began focusing our attention on this, the 96th season of champions back in January, and it has had us spinning from coast to coast and towns in between. It all began in Charlottetown PEI, the Unitel Canadian Mixed, Saskatchewan's Randy Bryden from the Cali Club in Regina, a winner over Ontario and Rich Moffat from the Rideau Curling Club. Then we were swept away to Medicine Hat in a double Ontario win at the CIBC Seniors. Jill Greenwood from Humber Highland on the women's side, and it was Brampton's Bob Turcott taking home the men's title. Then we went north to the Lakehead to Thunder Bay, Ontario for the 1996 Scott Tournament of Hearts and a second Canadian Championship for Marilyn Bodo out of the St. Catharines Curling Club. And then it was west to the interior of BC to beautiful Kamloops where Manitoba's Jeff Stoughton from the Charleswood in Winnipeg took home the Canadian Men's Championship. That only began to light the fire under us because then it was Red Deer, the Karcher World Juniors where Canada's Grand Prairie team of Heather Godfordson were the women's winner, while the Scots took home the men's title led by James Dryborough. Now we're in Hamilton and the sun is rising on a brand new day. It is the 96th Ford Worlds from Hamilton. And now we're into the semifinals. They're in the fifth end break, Canada with a 4-2 lead over Dordy Nordby. And she'll have the hammer when we come back for the sixth end here in Hamilton. Updating the other women's final, the United States and Germany. It's been all U.S. so far, 4-0 as they play the fifth. This is the final stone for Andrea Schopp looking to hit and stick for a possible two. She can't, and so that stone at the top of the 12 is her first point. U.S. Lisa Schenneberg from Madison. Well, the sweet <laughs> network for curling, yes. Well, we thank you very much. Isn't that nice? Thank you. Marion Vick. Thank you very much. Vince. Yeah. Yeah. The fudge and the cookies for Mary, thank you very much. And uh, let's see now. One cookie is left, Mary, out of those two bags that you uh, you sent us, and we thank you very much for that. And who ate them, Linda? The person to my left, perhaps? Oh, ate a few of them. Uh, just a few. As we go to the sixth end of play, Canada leading four to two. Good way. Yep. Marilyn Bodo trying to put herself into the final. Oh Marilyn puts the first stone in the top of the four foot. She asked where Jane to it? put it there, and that's yep. exactly where yep. Jane put yep. it. Doherty ignored it, threw up the corner guard. And that's the Red Rock you'll see coming into view in a moment. There it is. And now we're playing the tight, tight guard on the shot rock that's sitting at the 11 o'clock top of the four foot, and it's half covered. five ends were interesting in that remember two points for both teams were scored when they were trying to blank the last two points for Canada came because of a great shot by Kim Gillard great double and roll nice draw for Maryland the numbers in brackets are the numbers of shots they played and yes it's been pretty open lots of takeouts so far good numbers for both teams but Doherty knows she's got to be fairly aggressive now to try and get back those two points she gave up last end come in, little, 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 little. Over it. Come in. Come and the crash in front raises in the Canadian stone. Oh, Marilyn. She's going to close it off again, but by the guard. Going back to the last end, a terrific shot by Kim Gillard really set that end up. And then a, a very bad mistake by the uh, Norwegians with uh, Doherty's first one, a bad brushing mistake. And, and then Marilyn uh, placed. Uh, a stone and not a bad position. Uh, Doherty caught in between. Do I play the hit roll? Do I play the double? And a draw for two. A big draw. A nice draw right to the button. So you don't want this too tight now. Going to try and run it through, catch the yellow one, get it off the forefoot. Marian Espelin. That's a backswing, isn't it? 
Big swing, big weight. Needs to yeah. curl up to get the double. Nice shot. Also catches enough. Sorry, Cor. Freeze. You can see how high it is. All the weight is in this leg here. This is just a counterbalance step yeah. over there. Like she stays yeah. pretty square. Now she starts down. The arm is still pretty straight. The pen doesn't work too well in the black. S -s -s freeze, please. You can see that this is a balanced yep. delivery now. She's holding her body up with her thigh muscle. <laughs> arm is fairly straight. And then the release. Corey Beveridge for Canada. Well, Norway likes the situation okay, now. They've got the front opened Tight, up a bit. They've got here. that yep. stone yep. off the fourth with the Canadian rock on we one side. It's just biting the 12 foot. Maryland's yeah. trying to put something back near center line. But this will give Norway a chance to try and get something in first. Shot, Corey. Trying to come through the hole between the yellow stones. Even if she touches the right hand yellow one that's biting, it'll still roll the shooter into the house. Come in, middle of Meg. Come in. Marion Aspelid runs a boys and girls after hours club in Oslo. Come in now. Let's shoot Come in, Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Oh, look at this. Well, I tell you what, with the right kind of weight, it does. Move. Yeah, that, that worked a bit. Well, I just was a little, uh, yeah. those rocks in front, Linda, you know what happens when you get those rocks in front. Yeah, Marilyn is an aggressive skip. She could have tried to remove something and maybe roll over to protect her stones, but threw up guards, and now Kim has to try and come Rip. down to shot rock. Staying out, you can see the light blue is the edge of the forefoot. At this point, she's still on the redstone. Whoa. Okay, good wait, Kim. Backstone is exposed. It's been opened up. You have to come through there and maybe play the split. Or the guard is what she's saying. Ah, come on, he need. And she's gonna go for Ben. Oh, Ben. Tell you what, she works that, Doherty works that broom handle like a conductor works a baton in an orchestra. It's flying all over. She points at the rocks, points at the hole that she's trying to protect. Wants this one right in front of that red stone that shot rock. Brother, it's Nick. Come on. Come in, Butterbuck. Come in. Come in. Yeah, come she in. could bring this come all in. away if she's got the weight. She catches the hole. Come in. 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 Yeah, and it might spin in. Can we play this yellow? Try and get it in somehow? The angle's kind of interesting on this one. I, I, I don't know how it we don't come want off. To, we don't want to shoot theirs in either, though. Yeah. Kim's talking about trying to hit it here. hard and spin it in rather than raise it directly in. It might come off of this one here. Might go this way. It could come off the back of this one. Yeah. Spin in. Yeah. I think that's what it's more it likely go, to do. And you don't really want to open yeah. it up. She still has the tap on that one. We have no way to get in there, though. No, I know. Trouble is, though, you get in there, you don't want to give up deuce either, especially around all this crap when the angles aren't even good. If we tap this one, it's going to hit off that one. That's what I'm saying, just jiggle it up a bit so maybe we have, we have a, shot. a tap. Yeah. Even if we don't get shot out of it, 
Say we hit it here. Yeah, I think Even that's that the one. Squirts that way. Yeah, as long as our way, shooter but... can can roll here, yeah. it's gonna hit there though. That's no okay. Matter what you hit, what you not. I don't. If you look at it from out here, I don't think yeah. it's gonna hit the red. So they don't think it's gonna okay. hit this one here. So it Try might that. come across this way here. Kind of wait, back it looks four wait. To, from us, for us, it looks like it might catch the we back. We might need back eight back just in case one. it does go off the red, eh? No, that's what she's talking about now, in case it goes off the red. I'll just let them speak. This is the rock they're playing back right four, here. Back four, back eight foot. And they're pretty frozen, but if we hit half a rock on the I th yellow, I think it in. might come off the back of this one and come this way a bit. If it does miss it, it's going to okay. come across onto this one, and then we might get some action. If nothing else, then it would seem she'd open it up a bit. Well, Marilyn was actually worried about opening it up, but Kim said, we can't get in there. They still have a possible raise. That left-hand red I one for Norway it. can be promoted in, so we've got to do something. Whoa! Whoa! Get Kim ready. Gillard. No! Whoa! Norway has hammer here in six. Canada leading four Whoa. to two. Whoa. Whoa. Now, come off that back one. No, it doesn't. Whoa. In fact, she punches it through, Whoa. and it'll sit Whoa. for second shot, buried. In the eight. Okay. Really hard to tell, and then uh, she was absolutely right. It was nowhere near the red one. Tiny, so. Tiny turn. You need to curl more. Curl more. Hit it right on the outside. Scary there for a minute, eh? Yeah, real scary. Marion Haslam, our Norwegian third. Wants to cover the hole, which is now Go more ahead. to the left of center, so they need this one to move for Go them. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Little. Whoa. Come in. 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 Little. Little. I don't think so. No, I don't. What if I was to just try and tap it there? Got an automatic raise there. I know. Got a, if we move that, which got an automatic raise there to the button, I think I that's a dangerous one to, to pop to. You want a guard? This is the automatic raise she's talking about that they have, raising that red one. I don't like Can guarding. Get the button? I don't think so, four. but we might be able to get shot at four. She was looking at this one here for a moment. They don't have Let's try there. Looks good. Remember that automatic raise was set up by Kim's last one. Unfortunately, the shooter just rolled to the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. But if you get to rock behind it someplace, then to even a quarter, then it takes it away. I think that looks like a lot. Only because it gets out there in the frost and it doesn't move anything. You know, and if anything, I'd like to be guarding that, that automatic raise there. Here, let's, Kim. A little bit less. Skip Stones here in six. Marilyn Voto. Clean. Close. Light only. Yep. Room. Yep. Any problems coming out this Hurry, wide, Linda? Hurry. Not really with weight. They were just worried Hurry, about line. Hurry. They got it by. Look at this now. Stop in time to be shot. Sure looks like it. Good shot. I don't think it's lined up either, Linda. Do you? I don't think the two in front are lined up on it, or are they? Doesn't appear to be very well lined up. This one just yep. gets by. Nice sweeping. Perfect weight, as you said, Vic. They, sometimes there's a worry, but it seems on this ice the weight is very consistent. Actually, the best thing that happened this shot, Vic, is that it didn't uh, it didn't curl very much after it got by here. If it curls oh, yeah, any more and gets deeper in behind to the forefoot, then it's going to be lined up for the double raise. But it stays on the edge of the forefoot and gives Canada shot stone. No. 
the main problem is if those stones are frozen at the front, yes, she can get a good line to the shot stone. They do react quite differently. If she catches it a little bit on the center line side, it'll actually come at a different angle than if she hits it on the outside. When they're frozen, that's how they respond. She needs it on the inside, center line side. Dordy Nordby looking to score a couple here, get herself right back into it against Canada. A little rub. I think if she hits it on the other side, as Linda suggests, she would have driven it almost back onto it. Shot stone now is that one top four. It's just hanging out a little bit on that outside of the forefoot. Catches the first stone too much on the outside. Does touch the Canadian rock but the raised stone keeps going. Just the wrong angle on the first stone to get the right action into the house. Took the right curl. It was curling in towards it. Give her her one. What's she trying to take away here, anything, or is she? Here, left. She's playing a guard out here. Where is it? Where's the weight? On its own. This is the line. raise that Norway oh has that God, Maryland Norway. would like to take On away, remembering that Maryland's goal this end is tried just to give Norway one. The one she was blocking. Well, she has to hope that she can get it by this one as close as possible. I'll just do that again for you. And hope that it makes a little move after it gets by it so she can catch this here. What's interesting is I played Jordy a lot and they do tend to come a little full and bring the rock back which gives them lots of action on their out turns. Many Canadians throw a very straight out turn so she's taking a little extra ice. We'll see if she's trying to get any angle on her arm to get this one going at all. Kind of slide to the corner and throw it across. Hard to tell from that angle but they do tend to try to get the action. Final stone. She has one, biting Go top four. Norway looking to possibly get their second point here. Well by. And just won't move for her. So one for Norway. And as we've learned through our championship play, that's a cheap hammer. As we watch the final stone for Lisa Schoenberg. Drawing against one, and she'll stop in the back of the eight foot with a single. Drawing against two German stones, and so that's now a 5 1 lead for the U.S. over Germany. While in our featured game, Norway picks up the one in six, and Canada has the hammer back and leading four to three in the women's semifinals of the 96 Ford Worlds here at Cops Coliseum in Hamilton. Updating the game between Sweden and Norway. They got the handle of that stone fixed and look at this. The red rocks like a little stone train. They all belong to Norway. Final stone, Mikkel Hasselborg. He's out there to help too. Will he get there? Does he have enough? No, he's going to come up short and absolutely. Eigel Ramsfeld has been a thief. He's stolen everything, leading five nothing as they go to the fifth end. The uh, fifth end break. The winner of that game, of course, goes on to play Canada tonight in yeah. the men's semifinal. We go to the seventh. Yeah. Canada leading four to three yeah. over Norway in the women's yeah. 
semi Whoa. and Canada with last rock. Norway's Whoa. guard is very long, yeah. well in front of the house. That gave Canada a chance to come around it. Nice shot, though, by Norway to freeze to the face of the Canadian rock. Like that. Though the no rotation that you mentioned earlier in this game, though, Linda, is going to cost them one of these ends. So, uh, like, top four weight? Canadians, yeah. Canadians throw a very positive uh, rotation. You'll see in a moment. It's warmer in here today. It's warmer outside. We saw Vic uh, yes. on the way. shores of the lake oh. uh, this morning. Yeah. And yep. The sun was shining. Good yes. It's beautiful out there today. Whoa. Lots of weight. Oh. Lots of weight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Lots. Lots oh. of rotation on this oh. handle. Oh. Oh. And it'll sit just holding on to the back edge of the floor. From uh, Kim Cooper in Dartmouth. What has been the average attendance this week here in Hamilton? Well, the women's draws, there you see the total, oh, so the average per draw just slightly less than 4,800. People per draw, but I Come in. venture I guess there's Come many in. more here today for these semifinals. Come in. Best crowd Come in. of the week so far. Go in! Go in! Go in! Go in! Go in! Norway was trying to come around everything to the shot rock. Do you like playing ours? Comes up well short. I don't think so. How much can you see? There's no jam, eh? About three quarters to uh, seven Why eighths is it open, right I think. Hit it right in the nose, you'll be fine. Maybe skinnier. Gotta look at it from the front. Here, come here. Just even on the nose is okay. You hit it skinnier. It goes down this way. No. The skinnier we hit it, the, sh the sharper it goes out yeah, that way. Yeah. yeah. Sam Gillard so watching his daughter like Kim. Half half. It doesn't matter about the shooter. No. This one will be in a good spot. Okay. And shoot that out there. I don't want you, you certainly don't want to hit a thin Linda, that's for sure, as far as I'm concerned, otherwise it could go down there. That's what Kim, I think, was explaining. Like yeah. Yeah, Marilyn was maybe no a little confused half. with the line. I'm very impressed with Kim and her understanding of angles. Hit it on the nose and you'll punch it this way here. Just, just off the nose, I mean, just on the outside of it slightly. But if you hit half a rock, I think it's good. Yeah, I, I, agree, yeah. I agree, Kim. Very, very thin is, isn't great, but no. there's lots of places where you'll still get rid of the redstone. Yep. The shooter may roll away, but that's Want not more? a huge issue. One little more. That's 12. Okay. Corey Beveridge. 12 and a no. half. No. No. Yeah. Corey must have been outside. They called off it right away. Not no. bad. Out turn draw. Oh, for them. Marianne Aspelin. Go Braz. 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 Whoa, 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 
We're playing second stones, and this is Corey Beveridge yes. here in seven. Canada leading 4 3. Line they do line have line Hammer. Round! Where is it? T. T. Oh, no. better. No. Wait's there. Close. Back Lee. four. Wait there. Whoa. Yep. Yep. Nice shot. Well, after a slow start, they're starting to trade them now, Canada and Norway. Is that on? They're getting great finish on these stones. Comes to the inside, centerline side of that red one. The thing you could do with this is come off your own with pretty good weight. I think that's what she's playing. No, so. just quietly. So. She did point at that at first, that she was trying to tick it or play Whoa, off the red one. Just trying to tick it. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. 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 She hits it properly. She won't lose the back one. Very nice shot. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> With that late finish, uh, even getting by the guard, makes a little more of a move, catches a good piece of the yellow one. Kim Gillard. Hitting the red one, trying to get a roll inside. A little more weight. Roll nothing. Okay. It sits there for shot. Not bad. Dad is sweating it out. Sam. Well, Doherty thinks she can get it to curl enough to catch the centerline corner of this yellow one. Kristen loves it. Mary and Aspelin hold it. They do. Great. Look at the roll. That is a marvelous shot. You know, that is marvelous. Nothing. You think about how little of this yellow one she really could see. Look at the angle on that stone as it's coming into the center of the ice. Lots and lots of curl there. It's going to break it in your another. I need a few of that. And also look at the great positioning of the red one once it finishes. Back button weight, back four. Just back four foot weight, just try and touch it back. Norway lying three. Canada with hammer here in seven. Kim Gillard. Actually playing the Rays in their own. Yep. Yep. Nice shot. Just the same. Great shot. No. She just swept it. Just sort of dug yeah. in on that frost. Okay. You know? Yeah. Didn't get there for shot. I'm trying to think back to the round robin game. I think Kim made a raise against five in that game and during round robin play when they had uh, the game against Norway. 
Another really critical shot there for Kim. Da må vi ut hit omtrent. Enig? Ja. Bare her. Sånn at den ligger herfra til hit. Vi har shot den. Vi skal helst inn på åttefoten. She's not playing to guard this situation. She's actually trying to tuck it around, which is a little dangerous. It's a big change in the numbers, Linda, from what we looked at earlier. Remember again, last end, uh, Doherty missed her last one, so she's had some tough shots. I really think she should, should uh, guard the tap back, Linda, as far as I'm concerned. She's going to try and tuck it around there. So she can use it. Come in. Come in. Come in. Little out, out, out. Whoa, whoa. I was for me. Come on. The dad is not going to be Tap ours again. Still have the double tap. Yeah. Make sure we. It really curls after it goes yeah. out of guard, eh? You no kidding. Mine. So, same shot then? Yeah. Sure, I have back four ways. Yep. Like good back. Really four curls yeah. after it goes by the guard. She's trying to hit this one here. Back onto this one here and get shot rock with back four foot weight. Double tap. Back four weight. Mr. Bodo, Frank, it is a shot stone belonging to uh, Norway. You there on the phone with us? I'll tell you as your daughter throws her Where's first, that? it is Norway who is shot stone. Wait for Close you can. Hurry, guys. Yep. Hurry! Hurry! Okay. Good call on the way, guys. Lord God. Nice to hear more, eh? Yeah, it didn't curl like yours did. Could have afforded just a little bit less ice, so it had the weight to play it. Mm-hmm. What's that? We don't got it out. Men spørsmålet om vi kunne slått den frem, da. Om vi den er dyrt. Men da er det litt farlig, altså. Ja, vi drar en guard der, vi. Sånn. Ja, det er nå. Sånn, da. Vi har fått bare gardert opp den ene siden, liksom. Aaron kan still komme denne veien. Det er en unfortunate part, at den røde ene til venstre ser ut som den er angelet litt for mye for å gå til den røde stønnen. Hun skal igjen prøve å tappe den på sin egen måte. Så Doherty kutter denne avgående 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 Bra redning! Final stone for Norway. Their line shot in a position to steal here in seven. That curled too much. It's not what she wanted. She just has to touch it. And no curl it more again on the you gotta play peel weight at it. Pardon? It's a pretty tough shot. 
plate peel weight at it. You know, at this? Yeah, why peel? Like, well, why not like hack weight? Just tap it to here. Which way do you like? Hack weight. You're messing around with. Oh, what about this one? No. Even if I. What harm can I do hitting this at 12? I think we'll get two. Right. But you can only see that much. I know. It's better to control the rock. Or that one. This is the other one they have a possibility with. That That's she... You have to hit this one. Tap this one right there. Yep. And that's for three. I like that better, I think. I guess she feels yeah. she can oh. get so enough so of that by the other redstone. Way, Just eh? off the nose. That's the one that Linda's yeah. concerned about. Like the handle should take oh, the right way, way eh? Yeah. Canadian time is ticking yeah, down. They've used way. up uh, yeah. about seven so minutes, almost eight minutes more than the that. Norwegian okay. team. What about? Um, this is the one they're talking about. Linda, at first we thought that you couldn't get it by that. Properly, didn't we? I mean, like sort of the same shot you, you, you can played, just but come just down. A little bit more weight. Yeah. A little more weight. Touch that back into this area nice here. Control more weight. But you're right, Linda. Can't she squeeze it by that I redstone know. without crashing on her okay, own? Well, it looks like she thinks it's just, just the there, so she has to hit it exactly yep. right okay. to get it by the red one to our left onto shot stone, which is of course the Norwegian stone. She realizes as well this is a possible three here. What do you think of this ice? I wonder if Doherty is uh, surprised by this call. Back or line wait. Maybe thinking I didn't think this was here. What do you think? Do you like the shot or would you play the other side and do the. Uh, the bump bump for uh, two. I don't know. You can't see much of the other side, Vic. As far as I can you just see it's so it's just if you just get by and touch it, you. Uh, I, I didn't think the back, the hack weight call on the other side was a too bad a call, Linda. As Kim suggested. Well, here we go. She knows she might be able to score three out of this now. Curling too much on her. It did curl too much. And it appears to be a steal of one. Yes, a steal of one for Norway. We're all even. Dorty Norway. Well, if this turns out to be a Norway win, will Marilyn Bodo look back on that shot instead of the other one? But maybe Linda, as you Happy. suggested during our break, the bigger concern for Marilyn is the way she's letting the front get a little too messy. It's getting very complicated. Uh, Norway's hey, Jane. doing a good job of setting up the angle so that Canada doesn't have those promotions. And uh, Marilyn really had two very difficult choices. She picked the one she thought she <coughs> knew the best, and it just didn't work out for her. Unfortunately, again, the Lead stone's so critical, the Norwegian guard is well out in front, and the Canadian rock comes a bit too deep. Gives Kristen a chance to make the better come around. Like this? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now this is the golden chance right here to get uh, around the guard. You've got to be top eight foot, just uh, bite the eight foot behind the guard and you're, you're really in good position. You cannot be yep. deep with this one. Real eight. 
the rim, though. Lots of room. Where is it? Eight foot. Lots of room. Weight's good. Lots of room. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. It's coming in top four. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Shot. Perfect shot. Nice shot. The line two, Canada. With hammer in a 4-4 tie as we play eight. That one was much better. Great positioning behind the guard and in front of the tee line. She's, uh, Jane Huber Perot shaking her head about something as if she's not quite sure. Yeah! Yeah! Marianne yeah. Asplund. Come on! That's incredible that she got it by both of those. Ooh. It was curling so much at the end. Now those red ones are lined up again. Remember, Norway good with those angles and promotion possibilities. Just by the first one, and they're still worried that it's actually going to keep curling and not get by the second one. Yes. Yes. She actually Come gets on. an inside roll. Corey yeah, Beveridge. Well, with that much curl, you know that you can get down to the back one and into the forefoot, so. That's our score. That's the other semifinal. Lisa Schoenberg comfortably in front in Norway. It looks like it'll be Eigel Ramsfell and Norway against Jeff Stoughton and Canada in the men's final tonight. We'll see that at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Look at that. Right up on top. Look at the difference in time. The yellow time is Canada's, and it's like a hurry up right now. Nobody's wasting any time. They're in the hack and ready to throw. I mean, there's about nine and a half minutes difference, and if you break it down, the Canadians could be in some time trouble here. Wait, it's really it. surprising because there's been a lot of uh, discussion, but I hadn't realized how much Coming more down, the Canadians have spent talking Final about shots. Finally. It's there. Back eight. Should Come walk on. now. Tap it. Should walk over there now. Okay, Corey. Shot stone is still the Norwegian stone. Well, this is a this is a great chance for the Norwegian skip now. It's amazing how this end has turned around. A couple of great shots. She's always looking for these. Absolutely, for in my opinion, that's the shot. You'll always have that one. You don't need to go to it yet. Yeah, this is the shot right here. Get it right into that area there. Having a great circle day today. <laughs> <laughs> Remember now, it's Canada with last rock, so the Norwegians have their steel point in there. Of course, you have to get up for the semifinals. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous all night. <laughs> Marion Haslam. Men mentally preparing. Yeah, that's right. Finger Whoa. exercises. Here it Whoa. comes. Whoa. Anything, anything but long. Now, meanwhile, we Whoa. take a look. You see, Kim Gallard is already Whoa. down at the hack end, ready to throw as Canada tries to pick up the pace here, realizing time is at a premium. You know, you're right, this isn't like Maryland and, and the Canadian team in this case, but this is some concern they don't need to have in the back of their mind. I mean, when you're trying to decide on shots that are critical to a spot in the final and getting you there, you don't need that kind of extra worry. No, it is a problem. It's got to curl a bit. Come on. Okay. The Norwegians are not lying too. Mm -hmm. 
Doherty's looking at that other side again. You know, she just, she, she wants so badly to play those angle shots. All you need here is a guard. And this is what she keeps looking. She runs over here all the time and looks at that, Linda. And she likes to point out every option. And as I said, if anything happens later in the end and Canada tries to get one in there, Doherty will have that double raise. She can use it later. Just a guard, that's all that's necessary here. That shot is always there if you want to get it in somehow. Stop. Having trouble Stop. placing the guards because of the All amount right. of curl they're getting. Yeah, the rock can be touched now. You want that guard over. Just a draw. Not to tap it here. Yep. Yep. It's long enough. It'll come by. The draw. Where was that weight? Uh, back eight. And Jane Hooper Perot got it five. Well, they had to brush that all the way. They knew it was going to break. Nice. That's an anticipation brush. No. Weight was perfect. Good weight. Yeah. Three, two, three, four, three, two, three. <laughs> Moving that broom out more and more. <laughs> Getting a little more swing as the game progresses. Now they were off this at first and then they jumped on it at the last moment. There was a slight hesitation again part way down. Uh, Merlin thought it was right there. She thought it was okay. It just really is swinging now. Norway is line two without last rock and the first skip stone Doherty Nordby here in eight of a 4-4 tie the women's semi-final starting to curl too much again Aaron's going to have a shot at it again I think you know, they could try and place the guard with the other turn even. They don't even yeah. look at it. Yep. That's a break. You take this stone here and you place it over here. Wow. Things are tough. Yes. Now you got to make it this time. you got to get down and just touch it back like into this area this here. Right here. Yeah. Right here. Flip that on the way. Yeah. Okay. It's back four weight. Yep. That's the second guard here that more. Doherty's missed. Now you're right, and they could play the guard with the other turn. It's interesting though, even now she gets ready. This, she's playing back four weight, she said, and the way she's icing, considering where the, the guard ended up and the ice back taken. Like this ice? Does this seem narrow to you? Well, you have to remember with the extra weight at the beginning, it does hang for a little bit. So it's hard to say how much less or more you need, depending on the weight. She saw the last one very clearly and what it did and how it broke at the end. She should know. First stone, as Ray says, you got to make it now. You've got the hammer, and your opposition is lying two against you. Now they back off, tap it up. Great shot. Absolutely. He made it now. This is a great shot, but do watch the positioning of the shooter when it finishes up. Get the double off. It nicely moves the yellow one over, but unfortunately the shooter sits quite close, and there is a double there. Oh, God. It's kind of interesting she's coming with this turn. Yes, the double is definitely there, Linda. You could come with the other turn now, coming off of this one here onto that stone there, and uh, 
getting them both. Vada. She's playing this turn coming in this way. She could play the other turn as well. Now one turn versus the other. What's the difference? Well, I, I think that uh, this, this turn cuts so big time that uh, <clears throat> and we're not sure with the uh, with the up weight whether it'll hold or not. Yep. Whatever yep. you feel, you know the best. It's yep. her kind of shot, though, oh. Doherty Nordving. Yep, oh. come in. Come in. Trying to reply. Come big on. shot with big shot. Day. Day. She, she was straight and narrow. She missed everything. And now, can Canada get in there for their two? Certainly can, I think. I go. She I never gave it a chance. Is there a hit and roll? I think it'll curl in. Is that, is there, Do you? I don't think so. I don't think it'll curl in. The button. Kim thinks it'll curl enough to catch the button. Does that look better or this? Actually, let's just draw. I don't want to. Yeah, I know. We don't want to. Uh... T line wait. Should be around maybe 1445 left to play two ends. Have Still going to be tight. Button. You like this ice? The time she doesn't care about now. She wants yeah. her deuce nice. here in this eighth. Rushers think Corey Beveridge, Jane Hooper Pearl is the crowd now. Comes to their feet as well, hoping to drag it in as much as they can. Oh, there's a rub now. Will they get the wick in the roll? No. So it'll be one for Canada. One is a lot better than it looked two stones ago for Canada. A reminder, stay with us right after this women's semifinal for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Interstate Batteries. You know, an apple sitting around too long it goes bad. It's the same thing with a new battery. It loses power waiting to be bought. That's why at Interstate, we're constantly checking our batteries to make sure they're fresh, so that you don't end up with a bad apple. We go to the ninth, Canada yep. getting one in eight. Oh, oh, and okay. so Norway will have hammer the last yeah. rock here in nine. And this yeah. is the Norwegian lead, Kristen Loveseth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. After uh, yeah. Jane Hooper Perot yeah. puts up the just off center line guard. That one will come up very light. Tight. Are we going in? Right here. Tight, eh? Although that one on the scoreboard for Canada doesn't look as great because Maryland had a chance for two, Norway had so many chances to lock up their rocks in the yep. forefoot and just couldn't do it. Hurry on! Hurry on! Hurry! Light, really light. Hurry! Come on! Come on! I know, I'm trying, but I... Sorry, I know okay. I asked, but we weren't sure. I indicated. What's the problem there? Well, the ice is really swingy and maybe slowing down a little bit. Maybe the warmth in the building. If the leads have played so well, those are unusually bad shots for both Jane and Kristen. Watch it in the center line area. It's just going sideways. Put your watch on one of those, Linda. Well, that one seemed to be fine as far as time goes. Okay. Hit it. 
they just they seem to be once they decide to, to, to slow up they're really uh, you know, dig it in and they're also moving want to want to sit half yeah, it's more half go around Corey beverage Trying to come around everything. Walk around, no line. Coming down. Eight foot. Come on, curl. It's not curling. Bring it back. Bring it back. Come on. Thirteen. It should be close. Come on. Come on. Right back. Come on. Come on. Hard. 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 Right back. Right back. Good shot. Good shot. That's pretty close to the weight we've seen. Maybe sometimes a little closer to thirteen and a half, but that's very similar times for those draws. Nice shot by Corey. Marianne Aspelin. The Norwegian second here in nine. I don't think I didn't need to take money off the hunt. Wow. It won't come that much, will it? Ah. Tight or biting, yeah. U.S. in control of their women's semifinal and Norway still leading. The men's tiebreaker and Eigel Ramsfeld right. does have last tight. rock. Yep. Corey Beveridge. Yep. Where is it? Whoa. Use it. Whoa. It's tight. Halfway tight. Nope. They're hoping it stops so that it doesn't overcurl the guard position. That one's still open. So that one got into the curl. Yeah, like... And so now, Jeff Snowton knows who he will play. It will be the three-time world champion, Michael Ramsfell in Norway. Into the men's semi tonight against Canada, and you'll see it at 8 p.m. Eastern time by Pacific. Stoughton and Ramsfell, the men's semis coming up tonight. Looks like a repeat <laughs> of the last one. Yeah. <laughs> two big mistakes by Marion Aspelin. Well, just too much weight. I mean, both times, uh, both times, Doherty said, uh, you know, light is even fine. It just can't be long. Tight guard. Possible. If you happen to catch this one here a little bit, you'll come across and you may come off of that one a wee bit. The Norwegian third, Varian Haslam. was yelling yes all the way. Marianne was calling them off a couple of times, but it really curls. So halfway. <laughs> Just a guard. They had that through the hole. They brush it hard all the way. 
A little less. Pretty tight. Clean. Tight. Yep. Whoa. 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 Nope. Nope. Nice shot is right. Seven well then. Split up then. Uh. Oh, look out for then. Look out for Master Gay. Uh. Fem then. What's she playing here? She's playing the yellow rock onto the red one on the other side. Just establishing Whoa. what kind of weight. They're hoping Whoa. to raise one of the red ones yeah. in, but also Whoa. move the yellow one out of the way and try and have a chance to play another Whoa. promotion later. Yep. Yep. Yellow onto red. And didn't open the hole no. either. No. no. I think that's uh, just tight. It is in, too. The front one is in, too, that, which is really bad if, if uh, Doherty has done. to try some kind of a angle raise. Thank you, Art. Halfway. Half guarding that yellow, red one. Bring it up, we can. Down. Whoa! Whoa! It's good, it's good. Whoa. Yellow. Top yellow and gone. Congratulations to the USA and Lisa Schenever from. Madison, Wisconsin, they are into the women's final here at the 96 Ford World Curling Championships with the win over Germany. It appears it'll be a 9 to 2 final score, and now she'll await the winner of this game between Canada and Norway. Canada leading 5 4 as we play 9, the Norwegians with Last Rock. Well, Marilyn hasn't left uh, Doherty a lot of chances, and Doherty hasn't been helping herself very much. The shots she's been playing have not been uh, with enough weight to really open things up. So Doherty's trying a really mm. steep angle here on the raise. Doherty Nordby. The Norwegian skip in her first. Just the same yeah. weight's good. Marin's going to guard with the with the other turn. Just outside the blue, eh? And this is what Doherty should have done. This is what Linda suggested the last time when Doherty was playing a guard. She should have played from the, the inside guard. out to the guard because he had to go way out and you couldn't get far enough out, Linda, really. Too much swing, Maybe really, with that other that. turn. Red one. Okay. This is the one she's protecting right here, coming this way at it. You like the hit? Hit it on the nose, Cam. Oh, she's, oh, she's going to hit it. Well, the red one, I believe, is second shot. And there is one more long raise for Doherty, and Probably I guess half. Marilyn feels she doesn't want to leave her a big shot and have a chance for two. So they're hitting second shot, yep. partly to get oh. rid of it, but they oh. might be able to sit there yep. and block shot yes. rock.
Nice shot. She's fired. She turned to Corey Beverly and she said, Corey, good call. You're absolutely right. The hit was the right shot. And she came down the ice. She turned to Corey and said, Corey, good call. Well, Corey or, uh, or Jane, either one of the two. Or maybe it was Jane. I'm sorry. But she turned to one of those two and said, nice call. Because now Canada's line three, and Doherty really only has an angle raise if she wants to get the one point. And Doherty hasn't thrown her last few very well. Last end and the first one this end, she hasn't been very close. She likes to throw big weight at this. Is this more of a controlled weight shot, realizing the angle here? Yeah, and I think also that even if she gets it to the eight foot, she cuts out of two, and there's only two down coming home. Yep. Jordy Nordby. Yep. Her final stone. Yep. 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 Canada in position here to yep. steal two. Catch the angle. All the way back. Look at this. Shot of the game so far, you are facing two and you've got this angle raised to keep yourself alive. Well, facing three because remember, Maryland decided to play the hit to take away the second possible point for Doherty and Ray, she did throw it with a little extra weight. Well, yeah, I thought she played this as back ring weight, but she threw it with hack weight because if she misses that stone, goes through the ring, she gives up three. If she gets it rocked to the rings, then she only gives up uh, one, but uh, she plays it with. So this is the first stone of the 10th end. This is the Norwegian League. Kristen Lovsa. Canada have hammer in a 5-5 tie. The winner to play the U.S. in the women's final tomorrow. And coming up tonight, the men's team is already here. Steve Gould, Gary Vandenberg, Ken Tresser. They'll probably throw some stones. They'll play Norway. You'll see that at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Whoa, lots of weight. A lot of weight. No. Nope. Trying across the face. No. Nope. Remember, the free guard zone stone can't be completely removed from play or it comes back. So Doherty will try and sweep it to the board. Oh, she's going to make a gold. She makes a gold. Nice shot. <laughs> That's the way to play them now. A little bit too much. Well, the weight was but it's good. funny, no, it's that good. width, that extra width helps too, huh? Sure does, and it also the arena ice helps a bit because as you get over towards the boards, it is a little bit very close towards and very a little bit frosty, so they kind of stop for you. But you're right, that's the way to play them by all, all means. Across the face. We've been all, Everybody's been trying it that the other way for so long. Now you have to have swingy ice to do that. Come in. Quickly, let's give you the answer to our brain teaser. How many times have both Canadian men and women won the double, the championships the same year? I think it's seven. No. Nope. It is seven. No. Nope. No. Nope. Let it go, Linda. You've really been on the last couple of days. Yes. Whoa. Whoa. Finally. Whoa. Big finish huh, after a really Never. slow season. No. That's right. <laughs> Trying go it hard. again. Go hard. Go hard. Again. Go hard. Hey! Good shot, Jane. Beautiful Come shot. <laughs> Look at this. You know, the Norwegian stones in the rings, but that doesn't matter. Jane has opened up the front of the house for her skip. Great shot. Just a little bit more curl. Jane, that's good. Okay. That's my wife out there. Jane, you don't have to worry about that stone in the 12th, but that's no problem. <laughs> The big the key is they're off the center line. 
Very <laughs> Aspelin. And even those yeah. two yellow stones that remain act Hello. now uh, acting <laughs> as corner guards covering the edge of the eight. You don't even worry about those. The four foot's open for your skip. That's okay. all you worry about. Marilyn's had a nice draw weight today. She shouldn't have no, a problem hitting way. that part of the house. To them. Okay. okay. They didn't like the way the Let's yellow one scaled way. closer to the center line. No, it's now covering a good portion of the forefoot. Norwegian third, Marion Haslam, as it's settled in here. Norway trying to put up the guards, and Canada trying to keep it open. Another front stone. This will be a little tighter, this one. talking about which turn to take. Kim Gillard. Trying to hit it thinly now onto the other. Norwegian Stone is still shot. What's up? Shot Kim. We shot. I think they're shot. Two, three good peels. A great front rock play. Chance maybe to get both those stones off the front, Linda. There would be a way of hitting the other yellow one a little bit, anyways. Kim Gillard. Great. It's tough when you're the coach, even tougher when you're mum as well. Yeah, it's t trying to hit it thin to get them both. It's okay. It's okay. It's really okay. Really, I think I overthrew it on you. It's okay. Jordy's room well into the 12 foot to get around that red guard. I spoke to Diane, I spoke to Christine. I didn't mean to drag it, huh? 
And where does she want to go with this? Top four around the red guard. Da gjetter vi. Da tar vi en vild gjetning. Og så smekker vi rundt. Det er god kostere. Dordi's played a lot of big shots. Even the last end have played a hack weight shot. See if she can find that draw weight. Her first. Skip stones here in this tenth of a 5-5 tie. Canada does have last round. Go, Blas! Go, Blas! They're waiting for it to move before they sweep. Just stayed out a bit, Linda, as you say, and they just had to leave it. Otherwise, they could have brought it right to the button, but it was—it just wasn't curling for them. We know the other side of that sheet. There's a big swoop, but uh, obviously on this oh, side there like? isn't. I don't know. It's only an eight-foot rock. That's the whole thing. She's got to make it better than that to to win the game. You know. Well, right now that rock is, you know. Yeah. Hmm. There's no time troubles now. Canada has enough time to finish out these stones. Yeah. They're just yeah. discussing whether to peel the front one or take the one in the house. And the thought here by like peeling that? is what? Well, you heard Marilyn say that, uh, mm -hmm. she's, that yeah, she'll try, probably try and make it better uh, to win the game. So if you take off the front one, then she have to make her come to the rings herself. Or if she does guard it, then she's only guarding a rock that's in the eight foot. Igo Ramsfeld and his Norwegian team watching, of course, his uh, countrywomen here, knowing that he will play Canada. And Jeff Stoughton in the men's semifinal tonight. Yeah. First for Marilyn Bodo. Hurry. She got the back one. Piece of it. Oh, she bumped it to the back four and has left it covered. Well, she made it. She made it really worse for herself now. She must have been inside the broom. She called immediately when she released. Come on, come on, okay. So, you can on that court. For we are to her. Little more risk, maybe. See how it's a little bit Come a lot. Where did it come from? Oh yeah, sorry. You will get so much responsibility for this thing on the last step. Well, she could come right in, but what you saw what she's going to do. Then she's going to just play the guard right here. Guard. Got it, 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 got it. Hmm? Well, there's the stone at the edge of the 12, Linda, that you think Marilyn might use. Could she have come, could she come deeper and try to take that away as well, or do you leave it high and leave Marilyn something? Well, Marilyn's going to have something. As you said, there's a stone she could come off. Doherty's trying to place this, so Marilyn has to go wide to play around it to the forefoot, and of course, to move into the final, all the pressure will be on Marilyn. This is over curling the position she wanted. Which may be the break that Canada and Marilyn Bodo needs now. Full forefoot. Full four. Yep. Maryland's had very good draw weight. They just want to find the place for the broom. They saw that last guard over curl. Coach Mary Gallard, Lisa Savage. Some deep breaths from the Canadian team and those on hand here at Cox. She wanted this over a little further. I think she still thinks she should have come right into this area here. Come to the top of the forefoot. I'm taking the button away from this big shot for this Canadian skip. Whoa, line's good. Whoa. 
Now it's Where with it? Corey Beveridge. Whoa. Jane Hooper Perot. Boy, it's got to make a move Heavy. soon. Hanging out there. Watch the edge of the four foot line. Watch the edge of the four foot line. Got to get it to the four foot. Got to get it full four. Full four. Did she catch enough? I think she has. Very close. I think, we got I it. think so. Can't, One yellow. Can't look. It is. Perfect weight, Vic. Linda, to just it's a, it's now the Norwegians are going to say, Let's measure. I know, but I'm, I'm almost it's ours. It's ours. Is it ours? We're definitely going to measure. It's yellow. I'm sure it's, it's pretty it close, though. I'll tell you, it's very close. Is it ours? I think so. I don't know. It's got to be yellow. Dorothy, what do you think? I think it's ours. Dory seems to think as well that it is a Canadian stone, the yellow stone. Kim, Kim said there's like no question. Well, she had perfect weight. It just took so long to draw in. Oh, God. Now, this, this is, is whatever we wanted. It's never failed us. It looks yellow to us. The Moosey Yaku gauge has never failed us. Not looking. Mary Gallard. I could tell from. I'm not looking. Okay. Right. Thank you, Lord. Can I don't fall? Thank you, Lord. The crowd will tell you. Wonderful shot by Maryland. She had to draw full of the forefoot, and, and we haven't played that sheet of the ice uh, very much, and so she didn't. The, the biggest problem was calling the ice for the shot. It ran, it ran pretty straight. It stayed out for a while, and then just at the last few, oh, six feet, it started to move. A great game by Doherty. She made a great game, shot in the ninth end to keep herself alive. But the Canadian skip dropped it in the forefoot, and that's how you win curling games. And so now it will be Canada. Marilyn Bodo and the I USA, know, Lisa Schindenberg from Madison, Wisconsin. Cam? In the yeah, women's I final. I a little bit more than that. I yeah, know. we thought it would well, curl too, but you got it up. Ford Hot Shots with Russ Howell. Here's an example of how you have to really concentrate under pressure. We're in the 87 Briar final. I just have to remove the stone. It would be so tempting to throw extra weight to try to peel this rock out of here in case it jams onto one of the opposition's rocks. Take the normal amount of ice you've been taking all game, throw your normal takeout weight, hit half a rock, no problem. Whether you're playing for a toaster or the Canadian Curling Championship, it's the ability to handle pressure that separates the average curler from the elite curler. Whatever your skill level, you must be able to handle the pressure. Good shot. Good shot. Remember, think speed, stay calm, be focused, and concentrate. For four hot shots, I'm Russ Howard. Time now for the 
TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Interstate Batteries. Victor, if you can't uh, draw, you can't. Skip. And here's how you win curling games. Sometimes it's by feet, sometimes it's by inches, sometimes it's by millimeters. And this was so close. She threw it well. She has the perfect weight. They have to guess the ice a little bit because they haven't played this side of the sheet very much. At this point, it looks like it's hanging out. You can see the weight is perfect. The sweepers move to it slowly. It gets to the top of the 12, the top of the eight. It makes a move over at the four foot, moves into the four foot. That's your turning point. But was it enough? The Norwegians said, let's measure. And so they did. And Maryland holding on to Jane Hooper Perot, waited for the official word that in fact it was the Canadian Stone to win it 6-5. And so Canada is now on to the women's final here at the Ford Worlds, and they'll play the USA. A cash donation will be made to the Coaching Association of Canada for the training and development of coaches in amateur sport on behalf of TSN and Interstate Batteries. We check them before you buy them for fresh power, guaranteed. There is joy guaranteed for Canada. They're into the final against the Americans. Marilyn Bodo is a winner in a thriller. And Marilyn is with Linda. Congratulations, Marilyn. What a wonderful shot. What a wonderful win. Unbelievable. And I am so thankful that that last spun just came in. I mean, Corey, all credit to Corey and, uh, and Jane. They just, they knew it when I let go and they, you know, were patient with it. And it was an outstanding game. We're going to see your last shot again. Maybe you can just talk us through it. We're going to have a look to see what were you thinking in the hack when you went to throw? Hit the broom and throw the weight. And that's exactly what I thought. And I knew I was a little worried about the how much ice we were taking because the frost would hold it up. It didn't have any change in weight, though. The weight was very consistent all week. But as you see it coming down here, you know, we're waiting for the curl to happen, and it's not. And that's the, the action of the wetness on the ice. Kim and Corey are, are just, uh, I mean, uh, Corey and Jane are just so patient right here. And, like, I'm thinking, just stop. <laughs> There's my Janer. Look at that. Unbelievable. You know, there was a couple of chances Doherty had to close off ends. Eight and ten, her guards overcurled. Did you find that there were places in the ice that were really swingy and tough to play? Yeah, I had a difficult time um, reading the ice again for those fine come-arounds. We didn't get around. It was straightening up because of the wetness uh, coming in on the ice. It's, it's kind of just the humidity that comes into the building. But the weight stays the same. So, I mean, that's why we didn't get around on a lot of guards because of that. And a tough one, you know, now you face the U.S. Any thoughts on that game? Paper bags again, no <laughs> thoughts. I'm going to go out and have a good time tonight, stay real quiet and tight with my uh, family and team and get a good night's sleep. Well, tell us just a, for a moment, your coach talks about paper bags. Tell us what that really means. Well, what we do is we keep the focus on ourselves. It doesn't matter who we're playing or anything, they're faceless. And it's not a, um, something to be taken as negative, it's just a very positive for our team. We want to be in control of our own destiny, we want to be able to control the front. So, if we're playing somebody, they got to be good, because we're in for Super Saturday. Thank you again for a great year and good luck. Thanks, Linda. Yeah, congratulations, but of course, for every winner, there has to be a loser. And Dorty Nordby will answer the questions of what she thinks went wrong. Okay. What went wrong was a great draw by inches for Canada to win here in the women's semifinal. The 1996 Ford World Curling Championships are brought to you by Unitel, working with AT&T Canada, Labatt, Good Things Brewing, and by Maple Leaf Meats, a cut above. And so after two men's tie-breaking games, Jeff Stoughton and Canada know who they will play. It is the three-time world champion, Eigel Ramsfeld in Norway. Two tiebreakers to get himself into the Men's semifinal comes your way at 8 p.m. Eastern time. What a great game it was. Congratulations to Canadian lead Jane Hooper Perot. To Corey Beveridge, the Canadian second. To third, Kim Gillard and Skip Marilyn Bodo. We wish them all the success as they now play in the final against the USA. So until we talk with you again at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, remember that 
Canada's most comprehensive curling coverage is right here on TSN.